I'm Joshua Bardwell, and today you're going to learn what my three favorite flight controllers are. These are the flight controllers that if I was building a copter today, I would put one of these in it. Now I've got a video, the all-in-one flight controller roundup, where I go over every single all-in-one flight controller I could find on the market. I know I missed a few, but I went over them all. And that's too much for some of you to digest. I don't, I don't blame you. I understand. People are asking me, just tell me what flight controller should I buy? And this is the best I can do at giving you that answer. In addition to showing you my three favorite flight controllers, I've got a fourth one here that I think is too cool not to mention. Uh, either it didn't exist when I did my all-in-one flight controller roundup, or maybe I, I just didn't know it existed, but it's super cool, uh, and I'm sorry I overlooked it, and so I'm going to put it here. That'll be towards the end of the video. So the first one that I'm going to show you is the Betaflight F3. A lot of you guys are asking me, when are you going to review the Betaflight F3? I have that video shot. I'm editing it, and it will be up in the next week or so. So look for a full review of this flight controller. But for now, I'm going to tell you that if I wanted a flight controller that had a built-in PDB and OSD, and goes without saying SD card reader, this is the one I would pick. Now, there are some downsides to flight controllers with a built-in PDB. Number one, the soldering gets pretty fiddly. You saw an example of this in my Combini build. The Combini is even more, I mean, the Betaflight F3 is a little better. The, the pads are a little bit spaced out. And the Betaflight F3 puts the pads on the top and the bottom of the board so that you don't have to squeeze everything into the top of the board. The upside of that is that you got a little more room for soldering, but the downside is that the soldering gets a little more complicated since you obviously can't solder to the underside of the board when the board is installed. You'll see more about that in my full review video. All in all though, I think this is a great board that ticks all of the boxes of what I'm looking for in a flight controller. It's got the Betaflight OSD with all the wonderful features that that brings to the table. It's got an SD card reader built in. It's got the MPU 6000 gyro, which to put it simply is the good one. It's the one you want. The 9250 and the 6500 have having noise issues, mid throttle oscillation, soft mounting, etc. And the 6000 is not immune to that. But Boris has come out and just said point blank that the 6000 is the best one. Uh, it's the one that he thinks and I think that you want to be running if you want the best chance of avoiding those issues that are associated with noise getting into a gyro that can't quite handle it. What if you want basically all the same stuff that the Betaflight controller brings to the table, but you don't want an integrated PDB? For example, you might be a little bit scared of soldering to the tiny pads, the relatively tiny pads on the flight controller like the Betaflight F3 or the Combini or any of the other flight controllers that have a built-in PDB. The other thing is, you might be a little bit suspicious of all the electrical noise that happens when you have the PDB and the flight controller and the gyro chip all sharing packed in tight on that board. These, these flight controllers fly fine. I don't know of any reports of noise, but it's a reasonable suspicion. And maybe you just sleep better at night with a separate PDB. My choice for a flight controller that has all the things I want but doesn't have a built-in PDB is the Omnibus F4 Pro. And I like this board because number one, it has current sensing, even though it doesn't have the built-in PDB. And that's actually a pretty rare thing. Normally what happens is you take the board, the battery lead goes here, the, the current sense resistor, the shunt resistor is here, and then the ESC pads are there, and, and that's how your current sensing works. And when you move the PDB off the flight controller, you lose the current sensing. Well, what, what Omnibus does is it puts that current sense resistor right there. Your battery goes here, and then here is a wire that goes to your ESC or your PDB, right? So you still get current sensing, even though you don't have the integrated PDB. Essentially, you get everything. You don't give up anything. And on top of that, this is an F4, whereas the Betaflight is an F3. So if I wanted an F4, this is probably the one I would pick as well. Although F3 is fine these days. If you really want an F4, go ahead. You'll go from 35% processor utilization to 2% processor utilization. Well, uh, uh, is there a difference? Eh, I don't know. The final flight controller I'm going to show you is the one that I would pick if I wanted a, a slightly more bare bones flight controller. And this is the Rotor Geeks SSD. And when I say bare bones, what I mean is it doesn't have current sensing. It doesn't have the Betaflight OSD. So for example, if I wanted to do a build and I wanted to use something like the Red Rotor RR OSD or a Maytech Hub OSD or any other you know, third-party OSD that I had an affinity for, this would be the board that I would pick. 
And I like this board. Be, uh, this board has really clever design, first of all. Uh, it, a lot of things have been done right about this board. It's got a really massive 5 volt regulator, first of all. Uh, it's got, of course, it's got the, SS, the SD card on the bottom, which I, I insist on, but it doesn't have anything else on the bottom. There's nothing else that you must solder onto the bottom. Like some of these boards, I'm looking at you, Beta Flight board. So you can just install it in your copter and solder to the top. You can even use pin headers if you so desire. Stuff's not going to get in the way. Another thing this board has done is it has used the larger package for the F3 chip. What that means is that you get five UARTs on this board. Five UARTs. And it even uses the virtual COM port so there is no uh, conflict with USB. You don't lose a UART to the USB port. So if for some reason you want a lot of freaking UARTs, this is the board for you. So those are the three flight controllers that if I were going to do a build today for myself that I would put on the copter. And which exact one I picked would depend on how I was feeling that day and what other parts I had in the bin. But those are the three that I would pick. They're all from reputable vendors. They use solid hardware uh, in, and I feel like they can be trusted as much as you can trust anything in this industry where we smash things and the development cycle is so fast. You never can be 100% sure that something isn't something new isn't going to turn out to be a dud. But I would spend my own money on these and people are always asking me, what should I buy? And the, I won't tell you what you should buy, but I will tell you what I would buy. And if you feel like you agree with me, then you can buy it too. But there's one more board that I'm going to close out on that it doesn't fit all those characteristics. I'm a little bit suspicious of it. It doesn't have a huge history that I'm aware of anyway. And so I'm not telling you you should buy it, but I want you to see it because it's so freaking cool. And it's this one. This is the F3 V4 flight control board all in one, blah, 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 blah. It's basically everything, including the video transmitter. It's a PDB. It's a flight controller. It's an OSD. It's even the video transmitter. Literally, it's everything. You combine this with a 4-in-1 ESC, and that's it. That's all your electronics. Think about that. I guess you need a receiver, too. Don't Okay, fine. A receiver, too. You combine this with a 4-in-1 ESC and a receiver and some motors and a frame, and you have a quadcopter. I am suspicious of this product. Uh, anytime you cram all that electronics onto one board, the chance that something isn't going to turn out to be quite right goes up. And I think it's fair to say that Chinese electrical engineering and quality control Let's just be generous and say that it's a crapshoot. Sometimes it's great, and sometimes it's not. And it's really hard to tell what's what. But all that being said, I bought one of these this week with my own dang money. Uh, because it's going to go in the build that the Siren FPV was in. The Siren FPV, the video transmitter, crapped out on it. Uh, that's a story for another day. The Siren is out, and this is the nearest thing to it I can find. It's going in, and we're going to see how that works. Well, there you go. Those are my three favorite flight controllers that are on the micro right now, plus one that's too interesting to overlook. We'll see if it's any good. Hope that was helpful and hope that answered the question that you're always asking me. What flight controller should I buy? I don't want to watch your stupid 40 minute video. Just tell me what to buy. Okay, buy one of these three. Pick the one you like the best. Pick the one that fits your build the best. Buy it. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.